Deuteronomy chapter 10. That's our reading for this morning. Really good to see you. You know, brethren and friends, we need stronger faith. Uh, we live in a, a sinful world, a world that is literally falling apart around us. And it's so easy to get caught up in this world to allow ourselves to, to seemingly be indistinguishable from the world around us sometimes. And it takes stronger faith to raise godly children. It takes strong faith to resist temptation. It takes strong faith to continue with God when things uh, just fall apart in our lives. And it takes strong faith to make a marriage work. We need stronger faith. I believe with all of my heart that the greatest motivator for stronger faith is the love of God. I believe there's only one motivation that will truly fuel the heart to truly serve God with all of their being, to strive for stronger faith, and it's the love of God. And we've talked much about what God has done for us this year, his love, his faithfulness, his mercy. So the question becomes, what's the reasonable response to his love? Over the next couple of weeks, I want to discuss and read with you um, and challenge us to love God, to love God greater and deeper um, in, in the future. So I want to start this morning in our Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 10, and we'll have a few comments to make after as we begin our day in the word of God. Deuteronomy 10 at verse 1, at that time the Lord said, come to me, or said to me, cut out for yourself two tablets of stone like the former ones, and come up to me on the mountain and make an ark of wood for yourself. And I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you shattered, and you shall put them in the ark. So I made an ark of Achaia wood and cut out two tablets of stones like the former ones and went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hand. And he wrote on the tablets like the former, writing the Ten Commandments, which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the mist on the fire on the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark, which I had made. And there they are, as the Lord commanded me. Now the sons of Israel set out from Barath, uh, Benjay to Marsera. There Aaron died and there he was buried, Eleazar his son, and ministered as priest in his place. And from there they set out to Gedgada, and from Gedgada to the Jataba and the lands of brooks of water. And at that time the Lord set aside the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to serve him, to bless him until this day. Therefore Levi does not have a portion or inheritance with his brothers. The Lord is his inheritance, just as the Lord your God spoke to him. Verse 10 says, I moreover stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights like the first time. The Lord listened to me that time also. The Lord was not willing to destroy him. And the Lord said to me, Arise, proceed on your journey ahead of the people, and they may go in and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all of his ways, and love him, and serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and its statutes, which I'm commanding you today for your good. Behold, the Lord your God along the, long, the heaven and the highest heavens, the earth and all that is in it. Yet on your fathers did the Lord set his affection to love him, and he chose their descendants after them, even you above all peoples as it is today. So circumcise your heart and stiffen your neck no longer. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God who does not show partiality nor take a bribe. He executes judgment for the orphan, justice for the orphan and the widow that shows his love for the alien by giving him food and clothing. So show your love for the alien, for you are aliens in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him and cling to him, and you shall swear by his name. He is your praise and he is your God who has done these great and awesome things for you, which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 persons in all, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of heaven. Like us, God was very good to his people. The generation before this generation failed to recognize this truth and, and really responded uh, accordingly, um, faithless. But this generation on the cusp of entering the promised land, they're listening to Moses and they have an opportunity to be different, to do right by God in response to his love. And I go back to verse 12 and I read it again. Now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? Hear this, brethren and friends, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and the statutes which I'm commanding you today for your good. You know, nothing, brethren, is changed by way of this expectation. It's a reasonable expectation, an expectation in light of of a God who has done great and awesome things for us, as he says in verse 20. To love God is to fear him, to respect and to revere him, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments. Commandments for our good, friends, don't miss that. God is always for our good. The proper response to God's love, to his power, to his might, to all the good that he has done us as a result of his love for us, love God. That's the proper response to his love. Love him. Pray with me, please. Our Father in heaven, Father, for another week in your word, we're so thankful. Father, we pray for stronger faith. We pray for deeper faith. Father, we pray for a faith that has the ability to resist temptations. Father, we pray for our marriages. We pray for our children. We pray for your church, Father. Father, we pray for our elders as they are 
I'm called upon to make decisions on our behalf, Father. May they always stand for truth, nothing more, nothing less, Father. Help us to love one another. Help us to always be willing to give one another the benefit of the doubt. Father, help us to not be distracted, to keep first things first, to love you, to love one another. Father, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.